Trader, Trade Trader, Trader, Crypto Podcast. Podcast. G'day guys and welcome to the Trader Cop Crypto Show. I've got a different guest with me today. So anything we've had on the show so far, so it's going to be a very interesting perspective that we're going to get here. It's Jackie Plunkett from Watermark IP. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you very much for having me. I'm very excited to be here at Blockchain and uh, Blockchain Bitcoin Fair. It's fantastic. Yeah, look, it's been heaps going on this weekend. And look, my perspective, I want to know more about why you're here, okay? Yep. So before we get into that, do you want to give us a little bit of a background as to who you are, where you've come from, and why you're actually moving into this space right now? Yep, um, so I'm an IP lawyer at Watermark Intellectual Property Lawyers and we've been uh, dealing with new technology across all the different areas of technology for 155 years and blockchain technology also applied to cryptocurrency is obviously one of the new emerging areas at the moment and Australia is one of, one of the countries yeah. on the forefront of um, this area and trying to attract this kind of innovation here. So we're here mostly because um, the common uh, source code uh, origins of where blockchain came from um, has often led some new innovators in this space to think that there isn't much IP in their in their industry in their coins uh, or in their token issuing and there is a lot of intellectual property and technology in this uh, area and we're trying to um, contribute to the legitimacy of the overall market by uh, identifying for people and players their intellectual property rights and then helping them protect them so that when they go to market or to go seek investors um, that they actually have, uh, have protected their intangible assets. Um, because that's what the world, where the world's going, uh, intangible assets and the way you protect them or proprietary um, look after the proprietary assets of your business is through IP. So we think it's inevitable that you have IP lawyers at a blockchain fair. Well, I'm <laughs> super glad to hear that because we do talk about the legitimacy of the uh, of the whole market. The crypto asset space is growing. Yeah. Um, I talk a lot about in the show about legitimacy of the business case. Yep. Uh, what the business is and anyone who's in business will want to know what the IP is. Yes. Uh, to secure that IP, am I investing something that's going to be copied tomorrow? Yes. And it's going to disappear and your marketing's not going to be good enough there for like, It shouldn't be a race to marketing. No. It, it should be a, a proper business structure with intent, but also locked up. Yes. It needs to be a place if I'm going to invest, I want to know, I want to get the tick boxes and currently in traditional markets I can do that. Yep. But in this market, there's a lot of boxes. Like if I've got a checklist this long of things I can tick for an investment in traditional markets, right now it's about that big Yes. in blockchain. Exactly. Because we just don't have all of the, um, the things that we need really yeah. to, to help us as, as investors to make the right decision. So look, obviously you're in this space because you see a lot of potential. Yes. I mean, look, you don't need to be here. Let's no. be honest, you don't need to be here. Um, the business that you're working with at the moment, I mean, how many projects have you worked with at this stage? Um, I've had a, I had a few myself, only like I'd say a handful. But uh, the other attorneys that have been in this space for a long longer have been dealing with this technology, not just applied to cryptocurrency. Actually, it probably across broader industries, any peer-to-peer -peer network sharing where the six founding or eight founding technologies have been united to apply to certain situations, especially with security and data. Um, technology has been is. is emerging and has been patented for a while. What we're seeking, seeing now is a lot of spikes in applications now that there's legitimacy, and they're coming from banks, financial institutions, yeah. government departments. So it's really um, an exciting space and that um, all innovators in this area should be aware of their IP because if you get your ownership of your assets in order, then when you go to market, you firstly, you know that you're not, you are doing something novel in the first place. So you're not wasting time investing in duplicating an effort that someone else has already gone yeah. to market with, but also, so um, you, you have a better sense of your worth and you can also get better credit funding. Um, you can go to different banks. There's grants that are available for different types of IP protected um, software technology, including blockchain. So I don't see why you wouldn't um, uh, be become across your own IP in order to protect your assets going forward. Yeah. So you're, you're essentially at the moment, I suppose your main market will be working with projects that are pre-existing, but also the ICO space, because if, if they yeah. don't have their IP protected yeah. and they can't nominate what it is, then they really should be looking at that, right? Yeah, so the, it's a problem if you go to launch, do, do the ICO stage, even though ICO is evolving um, as far as the regulation, the guidelines that have just come out with ICOs, but I don't see why it should, it should be no different to listing on the stock exchange or yeah. getting all your assets in order. Um, I think blockchain uh, technology owners should uh, look Look at uh, established business models and adopt that rather than uh, act in an unregulated way and race to market to raise funds or crowdfund without um, necessarily having a good business model underneath that's supported by good assets and good treatment of your assets. So I'd say before you launch or go near an ICO, 
uh, do a due diligence, get your IP ducks in a row, um, sort out your business model case beforehand, and then you'll note that when you go through the ICO process, you'll have a lot more legitimacy and people will understand what you're trying to do. It also means you won't disclose everything in your white paper and knock yourself out for potential patent protection or trade secrets, which is an inadvertent um, shame with some people that are racing the others yeah. in the market at the moment. And unfortunately, human beings have never really changed. If you have a great idea, the first thing you want to do is tell somebody, yeah. please don't. <laughs> uh, don't protect, you have assets that you want to protect, so, um, and they could be worth a lot. And Australia is very innovative. Um, we're competing and punching way above our own weight, so I think uh, take a very strong commercial approach and think that you're worth something. Yes. Not tall poppy syndrome, you're worth something and it might work really well in the future. So invest, invest in yourself, yeah. invest in what you're doing. Yeah. Well, you, you brought up uh, a lot of uh, right now ICOs should be taking a, a bit of a model from traditional businesses yeah. right now. What I'm seeing, I spoke, spoke to a gentleman yesterday, Anouk, who does um, there's a lot of stuff, but basically he's a conduit for blockchain and business, traditional businesses. To, to let, he goes and looks at their businesses and goes, is there any way that we can use the blockchain to you know, optimize the business, more, efficient. yep. more efficiency, mm -hmm. cheaper, faster, all the things that blockchain can do, yep. is there ways of doing this? Now, I like the idea of that because I like to invest in a business that's already operating. Yep. Now, we've seen a tokenization conversation of everything, literally everything, yep. uh, if we're to be believed, is going to be tokenized one day. Yep. And what we need to do is we need to bring in that legitimacy, uh, plug it in so that when you say the legitimacy as well, yep. for the ICOs out there, if you want to raise capital and you want it from traditional investors, people that are not just crypto people that have a big wad of Ethereum or Bitcoin or whatever, yep. this is the sort of stuff you need to do. Yep. I want to see this stuff. Now, I am in the crypto space. Mm. I've got a lot of people out there, people that are watching the show, listening to the podcast right now, yep. that want to invest, but they're like, I can't see what I need to invest just yet. Yes. So it's really important the sort of work you're doing at the minute. Yep. Um, with where you're at right now, yep. are you just getting bombarded or is it you're finding that the ICO and the, the crypto space is still a little bit like, well, we don't think we need you? Yes, it's a, it's a bit of both actually. Um, I think it was very much that attitude, we don't think we need you last year. But I would say with the spike and everything that's going on and the increasing regulation, um, now, uh, now as the market matures, then people take IP more seriously when the market matures. When, when a new technology launches um, and it's a discovery invention stage, everybody latches onto it um, just to be through the excitement of um, getting it together. But as people start to go, no, I want to turn this into a long-standing um, business model, then they start to get more serious about their IP, their assets. Um, it's, it's very much like um, land when you had um, all the free uh, first colonial landers going out and um, staking out their um, plots and then all of a sudden everyone gets serious. Where are the fences? Can I sell this? Will a bank look at this and value it? You know, and that's when IP comes in. So th think about it like all terms of technology. Um, it's IP always comes in once the uh, market matures and once everyone uh, moves past the naive, possibly a bit naive, oh, this, is all, free. It. It's okay. uh, this is all free, um, I want to fix the world or um, or, yeah. you know, it, it becomes serious when uh, you want a legitimate business. And it should be, you know, there's no reason why this technology can't be treated um, with the same respect as a lot of others. Um, so the, yeah. uh, the, the analogy of the land, I think, is a really, really important one. Mm. Uh, and, I, and I think that the, what you guys are seeing there at the moment, Watermark, is, is you are, you're still very early to the party. Yes. Uh, right now, have we got the maturity? Absolutely not. Mm. Are we seeing it come in? We are starting to see it coming in dribs and drabs. Yep. Uh, I think that there'll be a huge wave of that coming once yep. so that a number of things we speak to hedge fund managers, we speak to regulators, we speak to all sorts of different people on this show. So we know <laughs> that custodial issue is an issue for, yep. for big funds. Who owns it? Who's, who's responsible for this? That's a huge issue that we need yep. to overcome. That's something that we're trying to mature into. This wasn't a conversation that was happening 12 months ago. No. <laughs> because they weren't there. The, no. the rise of Bitcoin throughout that sort of September, October, November, December period yep. brought a lot of attention. We're seeing a lot of big players come into the space and the legitimacy and the maturity need to go hand in hand and seeing someone like yourself and yep. Watermark in this space, looking at that IP and really trying to legitimize the, the service yep. and what the uh, what the selling point is, essentially what the technology is, is yep. really, really important. So, I mean, if you're an ICO out there, here's yep. the thing. You are right now in your pre-sale, or you're doing your, um, if you're in your pre-sale, because obviously pre-sale or your yep. seed investment, yep. they get that first, they go out, they go and try and make things pretty and package it, yep. and then go out with the public sale, all the pre-ICOs we're seeing more and more, a yep. lot more pre-ICO model, less public ICO at the moment we're seeing. 
You need to start to consider some of these other areas. We need to start looking at how we can lock your technology up for two reasons. One, for your safety and your long-term longevity of yep. the business. And two, because if you want to bring more money in, you need to prove to these people that you've got something that's real and it's locked up. Think of you, the analogy before, yep. Shark Tank. <laughs> yeah. Do you have a patent on this? No, well, yep. goodbye. Yep. That's the... All blocked. These are the investors that you're talking yep. to ICOs. These are the people that you want they're going to say, do you have IP? No, I don't. Next, yeah. move along, please. So, yes. No, very much so. I could have said it better myself. That's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> well, I yeah. think the legitimacy of the space is really, really important. Yes. Yep. I mean, for those people that are looking at projects that, that are out there as an yep. ICO, and look, if you are an investor like I am, you might want to start asking these projects, mm. do you have your IP locked down? Yep. Um, so that's the sort of thing you need to be doing. How do people find more about you? Yep, but we've got our website, uh, watermark.com.au. We've got some articles on um, blockchain already on our website. Um, so you can get in touch with myself or uh, the patent attorney, James Wan, who's very passionate about this area as well. Um, we'll answer all of your questions. And just, just from the point of view of getting you started to at least identify what you're doing, please give us a call uh, or check out our website anytime. We're more than happy to speak to you. Excellent. Well, this has been Jackie Plunkett of Watermark IP. Thank, <laughs> Thank you so much you. for your time today. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Good conversation. Yeah. Something a bit different for the show too. So you yeah. guys hope you really enjoy it. And uh, we'll speak to you again, no doubt, down the track. Thank you. Thanks so much. Bye Thanks for so now, much. guys. Bye. Trader, trade, trader, crypto, podcast.